This is a video for our mechanical engineering students on the topic of introductory differentiation. And in class, we've talked about uh, some of the simpler cases in the power law. And we've looked at uh, situations like this, where, for example, for y equals 9x, to differentiate, we would write do y dx. Um, times 1 by the power, so that'd be 9. Take 1 off the power, should be x to the 0. Uh, or in other words, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So that would be 9 times 1, which is 9. Which is a very long-winded way of saying that when you've just got um, an x with a coefficient, it just turns into the coefficient. So y, when differentiated, is equal to 9. And there's a couple of other um, situations in here which might take a little bit of thought um, to cover. So I'll just cover a couple of those. First one being this, y equals root of x cubed. So y is equal to uh, the root of x cubed. Now you're going to have to think back to your, um, your session on the rules of indices or exponents, as they're called on Khan Academy. And we'll need to remember that anything raised or anything square rooted is the equivalent of x to the half. And when that thing is raised to a power, it's actually going to be to the x to the 3 over 2. So when we differentiate that, do y dx of that value, then we're going to take exactly the same process. So 3 over 2 times x. Another way to write that would be 1.5. And we're going to take 1 away from the power. So 3 over 2 minus 2 over 2, or 1, is x to the half. And I have actually supplied you with answers, but I just want to show you a quick way that you can check some of your results. And there's a brilliant website called Wolfram Alpha. Let's Google Wolfram Alpha. And if we put any given statement in there, so in this case it's x to the 3 over 2, and we'd enter that in, computer speaks of it, x, shift and 6, 3 over 2, x to the power of 3 over 2, and it'll crunch it, it'll give us a graph, it'll give it in a few different formats as well. And it will show us that the derivative of this is 3 root x over 2. And we could write this thing 3x to the half over 2. Or we could also write this 3 root x over 2. And there's a bit of... Um, algebraic manipulation there but it can be perhaps not actually in that case it wasn't terribly clear but this this tool wolfram alpha can be a useful way of checking your answers provided that you, you understand the algebra that it's uh, that it's outputting um another little tip for you here um is for for terms like this when you have a compound uh, fraction as it were you've got a number of things going on So, right, um, this one here, y equals 4 over x cubed. That can be written as 4 times one over x cubed. And I recommend that when you see these, um, you actually split them up like this. So y equals four times one, uh, one over x cubed. We could then write that y equals 4x to the minus 3. Remember, when everything is on the bottom, the, the negative is a reciprocal function, and it will flip it. So 4x to the minus 3. And again, dy dx, you're going to simply apply the rule. So minus 3 times 4 would be minus 12. 
minus 1 from minus 3 will be minus 4 and we've got a solution there and we might just want to check our solutions and we have for that question minus 12x to the minus 4 okay so that's covered some of the basics there um, on these simple polynomials or these simple terms rather um, when we move on to polynomials in other words multiple terms such as this just deal with each one in turn and you should have absolutely no problem dealing with these covering the um, the methods we talked about in class right so on to um, three and four these are a little bit fruitier and in order to cover these you're going to need a set of rules that you haven't yet seen before so these rules happen to be here um, it may well be worth if this is the first time you've seen these rules copying these down into your notes generally most exam boards will give you um, a copy of these in some kind of exam paper however it is worth knowing them because there's not a lot to them all we need to uh, look at here is we've got sine of something x that might be sine 3x when it's differentiated that would be 3 cos 3x so just follow the rule replacing a with any number um, a couple of things to look out for we've got natural log here that is something to uh, be aware of if you see this ln if you haven't experienced that before in class natural log of ax will yield this situation and similarly e isn't just a uh, algebraic letter e that's one of our uh, special terms and that is the um, Euler's number uh, exponential function. So let's do a couple of examples just to illustrate and we'll see how we get on. We'll review this back in class. So let's have a look at, well, let's we'll start with 3a, seeing this is the first of this type. So 3a, we have 4 cos 4x. Um, so y so dy the differential of y with respect to x would be we can see immediately that the power rule doesn't apply in its normal way so we check our table of standard function it's cos ax which will yield negative a which in this case is 4 negative 4 times the original 4 which is here sine ax 4x if we attempt to rewrite that a bit neater which i am struggling with tonight my graphics tablet we've got minus 16 minus 4 times 4 sine 4x and that is the differential of our original function. We'll check that against our solutions. Oops. There we go. For 3a, we have minus 16 sine 4x. We'll do another one just to illustrate something that looks a little bit more confusing. 3g, for example. That is going to equal um, our original one is y equals e to the x over 2. And again, there's a bit of algebraic manipulation here with fractions. Split it up. It's generally going to help you if you split that up. So x over 2 is the same as a half x. Those two are the same thing. You can just put that on the top and if you think about that in terms of normal fractions if you had two lots of one third that would be two thirds in this case we have x lots of one half that is x over two we've just moved that onto the top so we'll apply our standard function to this situation so dy dx is equal to a 
to the kx. So a stays where it is. There is no, so this is 1e to the half x effectively, times the k, which is the um, the coefficient in front of the x. So that would be a times k. So 1 times a half. So in other words, 1 half. e, which is our, our original equation, to the kx. So that's nothing changing there to the half x. And applying the same principle, we could also write that as a half e to the x over 2. Or we could simplify it further by moving this in the same way we had two lots of a third. In this case, we've got e to the x over 2 lots of a half. So that would be e to the x over 2. Over 2. Let's have a look at our solutions. See what we've got here. And this is for 3g. So it's a half e to the x over 2. And they've left it in that statement. It is actually a little simpler in that form there. So I hope that um, provides you a good basis to, to try the additional two exercises. Don't worry, we'll have plenty more uh, chance to practice these in class. And the thing to remember is when you see these kind of functions, try and just break them out as best you can and split them into uh, indices. So that would be x to the half. And when anything's in, ever on the bottom, that's a reciprocal function. So that is just literally going to be x to the minus half there. That's the tricky bit of this. Applying the rules and the standard functions is actually pretty easy. Uh, when you haven't had a huge amount of practice with doing dealing with any algebraic statements, just breaking these fractions down requires a little practice. So good luck with that. Any questions, we'll review in the class. So see you next time.